opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Shaw Cable Systems or of the station. Through our access policy, we provide the opportunity for community groups and individuals to express their points of view. On the fourth line hockey show, I'm your host, Willie Plouffe. I'm here with my winger, G winger Gerald Hasweek. My winger, Gerald Hasweek. Last week, I had Greg in. Now I have Gerald. It's good to have you back, Gerald. How was the fill-in? You know, the fill-in did pretty good. You know, a little slow at start, but then all of a sudden, you, he came through in the clutch. You know what? But you, I do say, Beeks, I think you're better looking than... The well, I, you broke the rules. You let him wear a hat. I saw that. I was watching. I'm like, well, a hat? Where did that come from? <laughs> he, he, he was arguing with me. I'm wearing a hat, Willie. That's it. So he let he let him ride with it. Last week, we had Johnny Martin in for the Kootenai Ice. You know, it's a great time, Gerald, when you guys are coming back from playing all year in summertime. Lots of good players. Lots of good guests for the fourth line hockey show. Yeah, you know, all those dub players and those junior, and whether it be local junior players or whether they're playing out in, in different provinces, but we're going to talk to him about, you know, what he does in the summer, training-wise and maybe just for fun, and talk to him a little bit about his childhood in Winnipeg here playing hockey. That's right. Travis Brown from the Moose Jaw Warriors, you know, he's drafted by Chicago Blackhawks, played a couple years in Moose Jaw. He's going back that The kid's got a heavy shot. Likes to drop the gloves sometimes, you know what? We know his dad. His dad can put the puck in the net, but I don't think he's talented as Travis. Well, I actually used to watch his dad when I was a young youngster. He, his dad used to wear long, uh, like, Cooper all shells. Yeah. Oh, he looked good. He looked real good. He was an alumni night, like one of us guys here. Yeah. So, you know, today's show is all about Travis Brown, talking to us about, you know, playing in Moose Jaw, getting drafted by Chicago, talking to young kids, what they need to do, what he does in a workout schedule. Every time we have a player on like that, we like to talk. You know, every guy is a little bit different on how they prepare for the ice time, how they prepare for summertime. Well, how are you uh, working out this summer? You know, I'm on a pretty good strict diet. Only 14 hot wings instead of 24. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> when we come right back, we're bringing Travis Brown from Moose Jaw Warriors. We'll be right back. Life is all about chances. Made, given, and taken. Chances missed. And chances that change everything. Chances to try, to fail, and then try again. Chances to grow. Chances to change. Chances to learn, teach, lead. Chances. It's all about what you do with them. Boys and Girls Clubs of Winnipeg. Donate. Check us out. Make the call. Welcome back to Fourth Line Hockey Show here at Royal Sports once again. Before we went off air, we talked about bringing in Travis Brown, another player from the Western Hockey League, a junior player, a stud of that, coming down to the Fourth Line Hockey Show, and it's going to be a great time with him. Yeah, another one of our homegrown talent. A lot of homegrown guys playing in the dub, in the NHL, in the, in the pro ranks, so hopefully we got another one here. Here we are, Travis Brown. Welcome to the Fourth Line Hockey Show, kid. Thanks a lot for having me on. You know, Travis, you know, when I talked to your dad today, we talked to you about coming on the air. We were excited to have on you because, you know, you just don't play in the dub. You're not just from Winnipeg, but you're drafted by the Chicago Blackhawks. How good is that? Uh, it was a pretty surreal experience um, getting drafted by Chicago there. I was actually shooting pucks in my garage, and then I got the call from uh, my GM in, in Moose Jaw, who was down at the draft, and right when I heard it, was pretty, I was pretty excited. What kid would not be excited about that, Joel? That's a big day for oh. everybody, especially being picked to, to the yeah. drafted. Well, not only drafted to an NHL team, original six, a lot of Winnipeg connections to the Blackhawks. What a great place to go. Man, Travis, can you imagine a couple of years, you're, you're lacing them up, and your JT, Jonathan Tate, is coming down here on the wing. How would that be? Uh, that'd be uh, that'd be pretty surreal. Again, uh, it'd be an honor just uh, getting dressed in a locker room with some of those guys. Yeah, that is true. Now, Travis, let's talk a little about you know. Give us a little bit. Like all our guests, we always say, "Who is Travis Brown? Where'd you play hockey?" Um, I grew up playing here in River Heights for uh, the Sir John Franklin Explorers, A2, and then I moved on to the AA Rangers, and then to the Winnipeg Monarchs, and then I played my provincial AAA for the Wild. So when did you start playing double A? Eleven or twelve? Uh, 11. 11? Yeah. And then you played A2 and then you went up. That, that's a pretty good feeling. That, that's for a lot of the young guys out there who don't make A1 at, you know, 9, 10, or 11, 9 or 10. And then they can make that jump to double A and, it, and keep rolling. Look where you're at. Yeah, exactly. It just shows that uh, hard work pays off and that uh, you got to keep on working. And um, some, some people are late bloomers. So it's, uh, it's good. That is so true, Travis. We're still waiting for you to bloom, Willie. Is that uh, you know, not that late, though, eh? I don't think they're pulling. Well, I, 
<laughs> Chip State call, you know, last playoffs, and I just couldn't do it. Well, that's a long time movie called Last Playoffs. Oh, yeah. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your year with Moose Jaw. How was it, and how was the experience? Uh, it was my second year in Moose Jaw this year, and uh, it was a little bit different of experience. We didn't have, uh, we had a much younger team. We had a few 16-year-olds and um, working with two 19-year-olds, I believe. So there were some ups and downs, but uh, it was a good experience all in all. Uh, we have great coaching um, under Mike Stuthers. We used to coach for Atlanta as an assistant coach there. And yeah, it was just a, it was a good year, good, uh, good learning experience. Now, Travis, off here, Joe was asking a little about the rink out there. You guys have a brand new barn. Isn't it it's pretty sweet? Oh, it's unreal. It's, uh, I've heard it's the best place to play in uh, the whole Canadian Hockey League. Uh, it's pretty state of the art. Uh, we're pretty spoiled down there in Moose Jaw. And you know, what a great community. People out there, you know, it's like all the teams, you know, out west there, they pack those barns and they rock. Well, I would imagine that in a town like Moose Jaw, you know, you're the show. You're the big ticket. Every, you know, Friday, Saturday night when you guys are playing, the barn's packed, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm pretty sure all our season tickets are sold out and every night it's a great crowd and a great atmosphere. Now, Travis, what for you, you know, during the season, time, playing during the season, what is curfew for you and what would be a daily routine? School or what, what you're going on, working out, and then get ready to go to practice? Oh, well, my first year it was uh, wake up, go to school, and then after school you'd go uh, right to the rink, have a have a hard practice, and then it was more relaxing time after that. Um, this year was a bit different. Being out of school, you'd wake up, go to the rink at around uh, 9 a.m., have a good workout with the guys, depending on if there was a game later that week, and then uh, you'd basically go for breakfast with the guys, come home, maybe take a nap, um, watch a movie, and then you're back at practice. Now, playing in the Western Hockey League, we, we've had a lot of guests on, and guys you play against, guys you know. It takes hard work and dedication if you want to be part of that, you know, program. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it's a lot of hard work, and uh, there's some sacrifices that need to be made. But you know what? You're playing the game you love, so it can't be that hard. Yeah. Gerald, you know, like so many times we talk about the young guys, you know, they can get guided the wrong way and take the wrong path. You got to be dedicated. You got to work out. You know, you got to stay away from the things that get you in trouble. Well, I think it's a great message, you know. Um, you're not always going to play on the top team. Things don't always work out exactly like you think they will or hope they will. But if you keep working hard, you know, and you put the dedication in, at least at the very least you'll know, hey, I gave it my all. Sometimes it does work out, sometimes it doesn't. Like us, we still play hockey because we love it, right? We tried hard when we were kids. <laughs> we just didn't have what it takes. But here's a good example of... You know, hard work and pe per perseverance does does pay off. And you know what I, I like to hear always drilled is the young bucks, young players saying, you know what, hard work pays off. Travis, now we and uh, we we got a reputation a little bit. You got a pretty heavy shot, eh? Ah, uh, it's okay. You can tell us. It's all right. Uh, I work on it quite a bit, so I hope it's I hope it's better than better than average. Your dad says at home you're hammering the pucks a lot at home, and that's a good thing for kids. You, at home, you have to shoot some pucks if you want to have a harder shot. Exactly. Um, to the, be the best at your trait, you have to work on it. So uh, shooting pucks is fun for me, and plus it enhances my shot. Well, one question we always ask, when you were a kid, you know, who was your favorite player, and who did you idolize? And we'll take it one step further. Out of all the players you know, that our audience would know now, who do you think it most resembles your current game? Um, well, growing up, I loved uh, Dion Phaneuf. I just thought his big hits were uh, always bring energy to the rink. And right now, my game style, I'd have to go with uh, kind of a Brent Seabrook. Brett Seabrook, he's a pretty decent player to look at, you know, a lot better than Gerald, I tell you, <laughs> he's pretty good. Now, Travis, let's talk about, you know, you've had a couple bouts too, like, who was one of the toughest guys you had to drop the mitts with? Ooh, probably last year when I fought uh, Mark McNeil, he was a uh, first rounder to Chicago the other year, and he was a uh, really tough customer. Yeah, I've seen that one on YouTube, that was a pretty, uh, pretty good back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, yeah, that's a pretty decent scrap. You know, like we Jeez, said, well, you, you always have to bring it down to one of the one of the drop in the glove stories. You know, it's I always like for people to understand that you know they're still part of the game and it's going to be part of the game. So, Ooh. Travis, oh well, yeah, Gerald, you know we understand. You like know, Don Cherry and Ron McLean here, we're <laughs> going back and forth. <laughs> Touchy subject. Now, before we break off there, Travis, tell us what is one of your favorite bands. Ooh, my favorite band. Actually, I was on a little bit of a Nirvana kick lately. It's a little weird, but then usually I'm into just what whatever's on the radio, uh, hip hop, rap, stuff like that. 
hip hop rap, a little bit of Nirvana from Travis Brown. We're gonna break off and when we come back, we'll get right back and ask some more good questions with Travis. This is gonna be the two amigos move of the day. And you know what? Being a forward working on the fence, when I say do the fake the outside, let him look for the puck between his legs and you're gone to the net. We'll be right back at you. Work shouldn't hurt, but nearly 100 Manitobans are reported hurt at work each day. And back injuries are among the most painful and most common. Nearly one third of all soft tissue injuries are back related. Most of these injuries are preventable if we spot the hazard, assess the risk, find a safer way every day. Order Back to Basics to learn about safer work practices by calling or logging on to safemanitoba.com. Back at your Roll Sports Shop, Fourth Lane Hockey Show. Before we went to break, we were yeah. peppering questions at Travis about what's going on. Gerald, you know, the young kids got it going on, you know, Chicago Blackhawks draft. Yeah, no, nice to see a local kid do well. Like, you know, like he is. Awesome Chicago, original six. How can you go wrong? You know, no kidding. And we always talk, Travis, we always talk to our guests a little bit about spring hockey. And, um, you know, and playing other sports. First question is, what are your thoughts on that about spring hockey? Um, I think it's great. Um, Hockey is a great game and it's always fun to play. Um, but also you got to recharge your battery sometimes. So a uh, couple months of it is good and then a couple months just enjoying, enjoying the summer, enjoying the weather. Right there, Gerald. You know, we always talk about that and it seems like it's coming back to the same thing, right? You, uh, sports, other sports and other, ho other than hockey all year round. Yeah, we're in the lacrosse section here at Royal. You know, and lacrosse is a great sport that, you know, helps hockey skills, you know, hand-eye coordination and things like that. What other sports did you play when you were growing up? I was a big uh, football and soccer guy. I uh, played up until I was about 13 and then I had to make the decision to pick one and it, hockey, hockey was that number one choice. Good pick. Yeah, you know, yeah, very good pick. Like, maybe, I don't know, you could have been drafted by, you know, some soccer squad maybe or something, but not playing for Chicago Blackhawks over there. You know, I'll tell you one thing also, you know, it's again, like talking about other sports, and it doesn't matter what the sport is, doing a little bit of other activity. If you're, like we you say, you're an athlete, you're an athlete. You just pick it up and you get it going. Yeah, we've talked many times on the show how we think, you know, soccer, the spacing, going open spaces, you know, that's been taught in hockey a lot. Lacrosse, like I mentioned, hand-eye, football, you know, learning how to hit, to take a hit, you know, how to protect yourselves. You know, we playoffs are on now, like how crazy are some of these hits, you know, guys are flopping, you don't know when they're getting hit, when it's not. Who knows, eh? Well, I'll tell you, you know, like our, our camera guy, Happy there, he was a cross-country professional skier, like he picked it up big time, and then he went into diving. It was amazing, right, for swimming, but it gone from yeah, cross-country diving. He looks like some of the hockey players out there, right? Eh? Yeah, wow. <laughs> diving. Diving. So, okay, Travis, a little bit more about Travis Brown. Like, when you're, when Travis, say you're a regiment now for working out in the summertime being home. Uh, basically, I wake up pretty early, 9, because I have to get uh, all my meals in me, and then uh, work out around 10 o'clock in the morning, have uh, afternoons off, maybe golf, and then... Usually I coach, I coach in the evenings and, uh, or have hockey. And, wh and where are you coaching, Travis? I coach the 2000 Tornadoes. And that's a, that's a Renegades program, is it? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So uh, the boys take care of you over there? Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Bunch of good guys over there, Beeks. Yeah, so let you know, there's, we have a lot of parents watching this show, maybe a lot of aspiring hockey players. So tell us a little bit about your journey, how, you know, were you drafted in the Western Hockey League draft? When did you go try out first year, all that sort of stuff, your graduation to where you are now? Yeah, well, um, after my, my AAA there, I was drafted by Moose Jaw in the fourth round. Um, I went to my first camp and there were some big name players there. So it was, uh, you're always a little nervous going to camp. So there's guys like Travis Hamannick there, Quinton Howden, Dylan McElrath. So uh, it was a really neat experience and then I didn't make it my 16-year-old year, so I came back and played for the, the Winnipeg Wild. And then my 17-year-old year, year um, the provincial AAA program got me really ready for the next step, and uh, I made it at 17. Well, that's great. Now, so you make it at 17, and now get ready for coming up for the draft. You're having a great year, right? You're, you're climbing a ladder. Things are going good. Now, where were you? You said you were shooting pucks, and your name was coming around being, getting ready to go in the NHL. How, how was it to be drafted? How did that start feeling? Uh, it was interesting. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty crazy experience. Just uh, being involved in all that. It's an honor being involved in the whole draft process. So uh, basically, I was at home, uh, a little nervous, obviously, like any any kid would. 
So I got the call and it was just... It's just your uncle. Yeah. Everything's clear. <laughs> now, you know, talking with Travis and Joe, like, like all our guests talk about the, the athlete guys who've been involved, it's commitment. Like he just said, you know, he wakes up in the morning, has his meals that are probably prepared, ready for him. Is that true, Travis? Yeah. He has a schedule going to the gym, playing some golf. You know, he ain't out there partying, rock and rolling. He knows there's something out there for him. Well, absolutely. And, you know, I think whether, you know, you're playing hockey, you know, going to university, taking a trade, whatever it is, you know, dedication is definitely an important aspect in life for sure. Maybe we should have learned that lesson a little bit earlier, right? Eh? You know, we could be sitting on the other side and maybe someone else could be interviewing us. Or we'd oh, be on TSN or something, exactly. you know? We, mi we missed it, Beaks. We missed our calling. <laughs> there we go. You know, Travis, always, you know, it's always great to have um, guests on, especially local guys now. We want to talk about a little bit about taping your stick. We, we're going to get you one, but we don't have one. We have tons here, but we just didn't grab one. Now, how do you tape your stick? Like from toe to heel, heel to toe, what's going on? Uh, heel to toe, pretty uh, pretty standard tape job, about three quarters down, down the blade. Uh, always black tape. And uh, yeah, no wax. No wax? No. What's the call with no wax? Um, it's just, I don't, I don't feel a difference. Now, on game day for you, okay? Game day, getting prepared, is there any kind of psyche or what you go through your routine as a player? Uh, I try to keep it pretty loose. Um, still try to maintain my focus, but don't try to focus too hard because you don't want to grip that stick too, too tight. So let's ask you some more equipment issues. How often, and there's a lot of questions that our, our, our viewers have, how often do you get, to get your skate sharpened? Every day. Every game, before every ice time? Yeah, usually, yeah. Now, when you were paying for your sharpening, how often? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question, please. Probably three or four, four Every skates. Third, yeah. yeah. No, 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 not, not when he was paid, when dad and mom were paid. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, I just know, I think that's a pretty appropriate. Every third yeah. or fourth time, you know, certain guys, do you, now do you have any special way you like them sharpened, or you just hand them to the dude and say, sharpen my, my skates up? Uh, I usually get half inch. Half inch? And that's about it. But uh, sometimes we skate twice a day, so that's why I'm getting them sharpened every, it's not after every skate. Now how about on your skates? You wear the protective skate fenders or just go straight out like that? Uh, no, I don't. Um, but I'm thinking about graduating to it. I've gotten a couple shots off the feet that have uh, been real some real stingers. Now your coaches, are is that a big thing when they're saying get in those shot lanes, you know, block those shots? Is that real important at that level? Uh, blocking shots is huge. Um, everyone has heavy shots and accurate shots, so if you can limit the chances for the opponent to shoot, um, that's more the better. Now that's very important too, like Travis said, get the stick in the lane, right? Yeah. Shoot a lane and getting ready to prepare to, to block the shot. Not turning, right? Maybe give a quick heads up for because you're a D-man to the people out there, you know, proper technique. Like, you know, there's different techniques, but you, how about Travis Brown's technique of blocking a shot? Uh, usually I try to lead, lead with my stick, get stick on puck for sure, and just make myself as big as possible to get in those lanes. Now you mean by stick on puck, your stick's out, right? It's not up here by your waist. You no, have it out in front of you, right? Always on the ice. Joe, that's a big thing when coaching young kids, like, trying to get them to get their stick out because a lot of them still are pitchforking and they, they think that the puck is going to come in in the air. you got to get that stick down. Yeah, well, you know, blocking shots is such a big part of the game now. When we were playing junior hockey, well, whatever we called it back then, <laughs> you know, most goalies didn't want you to get in front of the puck, neither did the coaches. Now it's a big thing, you know, and we used to be taught always go in straight. Now guys are turning, right? And so there's no right or wrong as long as you block it. And you're not allowed to show pain, right? You got to go out the next shift unless you've really broke something. Yeah, it's a different world. Well, I remember that one Jet game. Uh, I can't remember which guy it was, but he blocked like three or Tang four. Ready. Wow, Tang that ready. was huge. Bang, bang, bang. And one more and he stayed on and got off, you know, grapes coming on. That was a great shift for that dude. Yeah, so and it's great to hear at, you know, at the WHL level, that's important, getting in those lanes, blocking as many shots as possible. You know, by the time uh, a guy hits the NHL or a pro level, you know, how many shots has he taken on the ankle? So, you know what, and it comes down to routine, right? Being prepared, knowing what he does and getting ready. I think Taking it's awesome. Taking care of your body. Exactly. You have to be strong and in shape. You just can't go out. You get a shot, you got to ice it, right, Travis? Yeah, exactly. Are you in trouble the next day? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, uh, you can for sure feel it the next day if you don't treat it properly.
You know what? We're going to break off for now for the Ice Traders quote of the week. And Gerald, my winger is going to bring it to you. Get at it, Beeks. This is one. It's kind of, it's like you. No respect, Ronnie Dangerfield. I went nice. to a fight and a hockey game broke out. <laughs> <laughs> right at you. We're going to break off right now, come back and shut it down, conclude it. Talk to Travis one more time. Be right back. I thought indoor tanning was safe. They said their tanning rays were less likely to cause a sunburn. What you need to know is UV light from indoor tanning can cause premature aging and even worse. UV light can increase your risk of skin cancer, including melanoma, the deadliest form of skin cancer. In fact, current estimates are that one in seven Canadians will develop skin cancer. And one person dies from skin cancer about every seven hours. I don't want to be one of them. This message brought to you by the Canadian Dermatology Association. You don't need a media monkey to make healthy choices. Think for yourself. A message from Concerned Children's Advertisers. Before we went off air, we talked with Travis Brown about blocking shots. We're going to get in talking a little bit about playoff hockey, you know, NHL hockey, but Jerry and I are sporting. We're sporting some junior toss because, you know, the fourth line hockey show is going to the Mascot Memorial Cup, and we're sporting some decent jerseys. No dub stuff, but we got some other things going on. Yeah, well, the O will be represented there. We're, we ran out of Western Hockey League jerseys here at Royal right now, so we had to go with these. But you, these are two classics. They are. You know what? They don't change. It's yeah. a, one of the traditionals, which was we like on the show. We always talk about tradition. We get it going here. Now, we're going to talk a little bit. Let's, okay, Travis, let's talk about what's your favorite pick now coming up for, you know, going yeah. to the Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, I'm going to have to go with the uh, Chicago Blackhawks. That's a great pick, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, but I also wouldn't mind seeing uh, Jerome, Jerome win a cup. You know what? He's he's playing with a lot of fire and excitement too. I'm going to go with the Blues. You know, Reeves has been Ryan Reeves has been on. Talk to us at you know at the Steen Classic and all good things. He's been a pretty solid fourth line guest talking to us guys. You know, he's hammering those guys. What? Well, I, I never thought I'd say this, but I might even go San Jose Sharks. Like they just knocked out the Canucks. I know that your co-host was wearing a Canucks la uh, kit last week. And found for Glennie Carnegie. I, I, he texted me today. Upset. Oh, yeah, but how about Jumbo Joe Thornton there? How good does he look out there? You know, he's much maligned, but a big dude just getting it done out there. I think it was game two when he kind of went like this to Bietza, moved him out of the way. He fell on his knees, popped up, and put that one in. Thornton is a beast, and he's playing like a 20-year-old. The guy's huge. Yeah, so who on Chicago you think is the beast on, on their team? Uh, there's a lot. There's, there's a lot of good guys to pick from, but... Uh, have to go with the Winnipeg or Jonathan Taves. Yeah, he looks good. He looks good, although he hasn't scored too many goals, but Patrick Kane's carrying the mail for them. Yeah, exactly. Both uh, two tremendous players there. I don't Dave, think anybody will take away the fact when Buff played for you know, Chicago and they're playing up front there. Now that yes. was a power forward taking control and getting in the mind of the tenders. Well, I heard a quote from Drew Doughty. He said, he goes, you know, he goes, I can't believe how much I'm getting hit in these playoffs. I've never been hit like this in my life, you know, and from a guy who's already won a cup. What a statement. You know, what, what, what a difference from regular season now to playoff hockey. How can you not love hockey when you see playoff hockey? And, and you play at a high level, you, you know it gets tougher and tougher. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the playoffs is a new level and everyone has to step their game up and uh, the energy is just through the roof. I think, you know, too, Gerald, it's also so great to see the fourth line guys, the fourth line guys, you know, getting regular shifts and doing, doing, giving the first line guys a little bit of a break, getting out there and doing their job, like hustling, hammering guys and putting some in the net. Well, I think it just typifies how important it is to all aspects of your game are important because everyone's getting hammered out there and taking so much, you know, physical contact that you have to spread it out. And it just shows for kids, you know, don't shy away from, from hitting. You may not be the biggest or the heaviest guy, but learning how to take a hit properly, how to go in the corner to protect yourself, that's super important. Is that something that you guys work on in practice? Yeah, exactly. Um, finishing checks is a huge part of the game, especially in playoffs, and uh, those energy guys uh, make or break a Stanley Cup contender. Um, those are the guys that you need to lean on for uh, crucial minutes, and that's uh, it's really big. You know, it's been so many times that when guys, you always talk to the young players and say, you know what, Google, see the last uh, teams that won Stanley Cups. It wasn't one guy or three guys. It was a whole squad right from top to bottom. It's just, I love playoff hockey. 
I'm going to switch a little bit here, but like your your playoff beard, is that a playoff beard? Like I'm just thinking about current guys right now. That Pascal Dupuy looks like he's been growing a beard for a month. <laughs> that's, that's so true. Who's your favorite playoff beard? My all time? Yeah. All time, I got to go with the boys of the New York Islanders back in the 80s. Like they all Kenny had, Morrow? They had, they he had, looked like a hippie. He <laughs> was a shag. Was, you know, and, and Butch scoring, when Butch had to go, they all had him going. It's like, I think they were, they were playing great hockey and they are going out for, you know, having some fun after. They all look pretty sweet. Duck Dynasty got the look Ooh. from the Islanders in the 80s. Yeah, absolutely. That's crazy. How about your Travis? Like, uh, what's going on? With the, when you get going, you going to get the beard going? Uh, yeah, mine's a little, little more patchy. It's uh, more of a goatee, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty, I don't know, it's pretty embarrassing, I'd say. <laughs> Taves had a quite a one going Ooh. sometimes. A big it's tough to down. believe Willie shaved this morning, though. I just, it, it, you like know, Homer Simpson. <laughs> things happen. You know, I, I think I, I'm going to ask if I can get a new new shaver because it's, you know, I shaved this morning and I think you have to get rid of the one I had for the last 10 years. Yeah. It's about time we spend a little bit more money. Or, How know, about the chin strap? Are you going to work the chin strap beard, maybe? <laughs> that would be one bad luck, you know. We want to thank Travis Brown from the Moose Jaw Warriors, homegrown Winnipeg guy, Chicago Blackhawks draft pick for coming on the fourth line show thanks for coming out travis thank you very much it's thanks, a great buddy. time we're gonna break off right now we get back we'll talk a little bit more be a part of a team a team that is making a difference in the lives of millions of canadians i joined team diabetes to get healthy and now i'm training for my third marathon did you know that proper nutrition and regular physical activity can help manage diabetes as well as prevent type 2 diabetes together we can raise awareness and funds for diabetes Running with Team Diabetes Canada was the most exhilarating experience of my life. Eat healthy, be active, join today and see how far you can go with Team Diabetes. Help create a healthier Canada. Some say the Children's Wish Foundation started with this locket. A wish from a hospitalized girl for something special her mother could remember her by. And 25 years and 15,000 wishes later, we make sure the magic and excitement includes the entire family. And we celebrate the successes and hope that wishes can bring. Thank you from the Children's Wish Foundation of Canada and this station. Once again, the fourth line hockey show had a great guest on Travis Brown there. You know what, Jill, I, when he called me, like, a player went from A2, you know, then the double, triple A, drafted a dub, drafted by a Blackhawks. That is so good for kids to hear, you know what? Everyone spurts at their own time. It, too much pressure on young kids thinking, you know what, if I don't get drafted, if this doesn't happen to me, I'm not going anywhere. A prime example. Yeah, and you can tell he loved hockey, right? And I think if you love something, you want to excel at it. And like you said, different rates, but what a great story, you know? I didn't make my whatever, 13-year-old team in whatever sport, it's not the end of the world, you know? You still have opportunity. It just shows you right there. You know, and, and that's and that's one thing that we need to hammer for all the kids and all the athletes out there. No matter what your sport is or what your gig is, you know, keep trying. Don't quit. You know, you might not be the stud or studded at that time, but, you know, everyone gets going, and you're going to get there. Just stay focused, and you know what? Keep your passion, your dream alive, and it'll happen to you. And like Travis said, you know, once again, hard work. You need to stay focused and have hard work. Yeah, committed, hard working, you know, and, and you got to love what you're doing. It, it's got to be fun. And I just think that, you know, whether you're, you're uh, building a wall, your brick wall, you're training for hockey, um, you know, you're driving a truck, you got to enjoy it. You'll do a better job. And that's, you know, one of the things in life you got to really try and challenge yourself to do. Keep it going, you know, he's talking about shooting pucks, you know, he's playing the second year in the dub there, you know, he's drafting all good things, he still shoots pucks in the basement of his parents' house, how good is that? Played soccer, football, you know, other sports that helped him progress. And we always talk about the fourth line hockey show, you know, getting involved in other sports, you know, because you're, you're agility, you're moving, any kind of athletic um, sports therapy, doing something is going to contribute to your game that you love. We got Memorial Cup coming up. I'm still on the fence. I might have to put in a pinch hitter, but you excited? You know, I'm getting very excited. Things are happening. You know, last week we had your brother on, and he's standing in for you because I know you're going to be away doing some tanning in Florida. You were in Mexico one time. Now you're going to be in Florida. You know, I, I got to clean the back shop here. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> okay, like we got, we got like all the big hitters. Bob McKenzie's going to be there. What's, yes, a, yes. what's the big guy on on Sportsnet Hockey oh, Central? Uh, uh, Kiprios. Kiprios. You Kiprios know, maybe we'll get in there with Kiprios. Hey. <laughs> We gotta bring some you know, of the fourth liners. Bring he, you know, he could be on the show. He was a fourth. He liner. was a fourth liner. We're gonna, you know, I'm gonna actually, you know, we'll have to send an email, email saying that, you know, fourth liner auction is coming out. We got Plouffe and Beaker coming out. 
we'll let them on this show as long as we get to go on their show. That's a good call. <laughs> Once again, a fourth lane hockey show. I had a great time. We'll see you guys next week. The opinions expressed on the program you have just watched are not necessarily those of Shaw Cable Systems or of the station. Through our access policy, we provide the opportunity for community groups and individuals to express their points of view. 